Jim Benton. And this is my first ever Azure everyday video. I'd like to talk about Power Apps and navigation menus. One of the biggest challenges I have when developing Power Apps applications is making the best use of available real estate on a screen. On-demand navigation by a drop-down menu helps with this challenge. Have an app underway that illustrates this type of navigation. So let's get to it. In this app, I'm displaying some of my son's artwork. I decided to separate the art by medium. So I will have several screens. Now we need to add a menu to this page. There are four components inserted to the screen that make up these menus. There's the hamburger icon, which controls the visible property of the other items, arrow icons that act as links to the other screens, labels to indicate what the links are for, and the rectangle icon that acts as the background ties it all together. We'll also use one variable that would hold the value of the visible property for the items. To get started, I'll add the hamburger icon and position and size it. I'll also change the color. It's in for showing screen and we'll change the hover fill. The reason for changing the hover fill is so that we get the little highlight there when we mouse over the icon. We can add rectangle. It's at the under the icons and you near the bottom. Is it? And this is the exact size I need to hold the other three icon links for the other icons. Also change the color. Or for the rectangles, just the fill. We don't always want it to show, and we want to be able to control that. The way we do that is through a variable. So we'll set the visible property rectangle to the variable pencil. You can see I'm using that for the other screens so we have consistency and to be able to control that value on the on select for the hamburger menu we will update the context the Bar show pencil menu variable to be the opposite of whatever the value is currently. So if we come into the screen and the, and the menu showing and we click the hamburger icon, it'll go away. And there we have it. Now we can add the links to the other screens. First thing we want to do is add a label. And in that label, we're going to make this be a link back to the main screen. So we need to add, make the text say main. And we will position and size. Notice that my text is all the way to the left side, the uh, label. And what I want to do is give enough room to have my arrow icon show up on the left. So the way I handle that is by padding the left side of the text, and it moves the text over. So now we need to add arrow icon. And there's no special reason for using the arrow other than I think it looks like it's pointing to the text and it makes sense to me to have that be my link icon. So we will position and size width of the rectangle. Now you notice my arrow is right in the middle over the text. The way we handle that is the same way we handled the 
moving the text in the label, and that's padding. And we will add the right side, which will push the arrow back to the left, and our padding value. Now you see it's all the way over to the left. Now the reason we need both of these is that the label does not change your mouse whenever you hover, but the icon does. So now we have the um, arrow, which will change our uh, mouse whenever we hover, and then the text that says where we're going. So it's important to know in your list the order in which these uh, things are lined up. So the icon, I haven't changed the name of the icon, haven't named any of this stuff, and because it's some trying to get this done quickly. Uh, but the icon nine is this arrow icon. And then the label four, you see it didn't change what was highlighted there. It's the main label. So icon nine, the arrow label, needs to be above or on top of that uh, label for the uh, main, the link to the main screen. The reason for this is when I mouse over, I actually want to be mousing over the icon, not the label. And when it's in disorder, that's what that's what will happen, and my mouse will change uh, to the pointy finger like I, you see right now. The other thing we want to do is not just have the mouse change, but also highlight um, so that it looks like you know whenever we're going through our links on the menu that each one of them is actually highlighting. And the way we do that is with the hover fill for the icon, or the arrow icon. And that hook fill needs to be oh, change it to that. And now, whenever I hold my Alt key down, you see how when we mouse over, it actually highlights. So to make it actually go to the main screen, we need to change the on select for that arrow icon. On select needs to be option. Action. We'll say navigate to the main screen and we'll just do a fade. But that's not the only thing. When we leave the pencil screen, we also want to make sure we're tidying up behind ourselves by hiding this menu. So we also will do, after we navigate to the main screen, we will update the context on our pencil menu and set it to be the opposite of whatever it is. It'll be showing, so we'll make it hide. And let's see this in action. Run the program. Oops, I forgot to do something. Who knows what I forgot to do? I forgot to add to our visible properties our handling vis visibility. And they will get the same value that we gave the rectangle. Now, wait a minute. Everything hides and shows up whenever I click the icon. Now, since I have the right navigation code behind the arrow icon when I click on main, it takes us back to the main screen. And we can get back to the pencil screen. And you notice our menu is now hidden because we updated the context as we clicked on the button to go to the main screen. And that is what I wanted to show you today, how to show and hide a menu to maximize your real estate on your screen and to make it show up where it looks like you're actually getting highlighting over your text. Thank you. And my first Azure Everyday video. Hope you enjoy it.